What's up, Ensven Squad? How you doing? So after a brief trip over to another universe, that being God of War, we're going back to talk about some more Mass Effect. Today we'll be listing the best order to play the numerous DLCs for Mass Effect 3. Now before we continue, I'll just remind you to check out my other videos. We're almost up at 100 Mass Effect videos wow. by now, so if you've got a thing for this franchise, remember to explore the rest of the catalog. Now I need to mention that every DLC can be accessed at any point after the Mars mission, so you don't have to do them in the order I present. Still, doing them in a sort of orderly manner will help the pacing of the game. Okay, so getting right into it. After you've visited Mars and recovered the blueprints for the Crucible along with Liara, you're now free to explore the galaxy. The obvious first choice is to go and do the From Ashes DLC. This is the DLC or mission that you complete in order to recruit Javik the Prothean. How many others? Just you. <clears throat> you can understand me? Yes. Now that I have read your physiology, your nervous system, enough to understand your language. So you were reading me while I was seeing... Our last moments. The reason for doing this first is because Javik can be completely skipped as a character, but considering that he's the last surviving Prothean, you really shouldn't skip him as his dialogue and banter is amazing during some missions, especially during your visit to Thessia, which I've already made a video about. Say she used it to protect Thessia when the heavens grew angry. Our ancestors were probably misinterpreting a meteor shower. It was an asteroid strike. We deflected it. You mean the Protheans? But that would imply a thing. Is not what you believe her to be. Go check that out after this video. He almost always has something to say, and he's probably the most unintentionally humorous character in the entire game. He's a grim soldier that's carrying the weight of the entire Prothean legacy on his back. He may not be a scientist, but he's still a very wise companion, and you'll regret not introducing him to your crew. The next DLC I recommend that you do is the Omega DLC, but not immediately after recruiting Javik. I'd recommend you go for Omega after you've been to Palavin's Moon, which is the mission where you're searching for the next Turian Primarch. Oh no. No. Palavin. We have an old friend there. Holy hell. They're getting decimated. Strongest military in the galaxy and the Reapers are obliterating it. It fits properly into the narrative, when the war for the galaxy against the Reapers has started in earnest. It fits because right after the Turians almost lose Palavin, Arya Talok loses control of Omega. This is because of General Petrovsky, a Cerberus general who was sent by the elusive man to capture Omega as a strategic fortress. Since taking Omega they've spread through the galaxy. Surely the Alliance has noticed. Cut to the chase. What's your plan? Kick them out. I've amassed a fleet of Merc ships we're going to punch through enemy lines and invade. Once we're on Omega, it's a ground war. That's why I want you. I only accept the best. The leader of the Cerberus occupation is General Oleg Petrovsky. He's the one who ousted me. The DLC will take you through the underbelly to the streets of Omega, where you'll fight Cerberus along with Arya in order to free the asteroid city. After completing Omega, the main story of the game is going to play out for a while. The next one on the list is Leviathan, if going by my priorities. But I would recommend that you can start with this DLC once you've completed Priority, the Citadel 2. This is the mission where Udina has become a security risk, and the Salarian Counselor calls for Shepard to talk in person. Found him. He looks unharmed. Get him somewhere safe. Now Leviathan is pretty long, like Omega, but since it's more of an investigation and not a straight mission, you can space it out at your own pace. Meteorite sample, with traces of element zero. Would Leviathan need Ezo? While it is not consumed as fuel during FTL travel, element zero will decay after several centuries of active use. If Leviathan is old enough, it would need to replenish its supplies. 
Narratively though, I think it makes the most sense in completing it after Thessia. This is because the story in Mass Effect 3 is nearing its end, and finally finding the Leviathan prepares you a lot for the eventual revelation at the end of the game. Turn back. The darkness can't be breached. No! <laughs> Maintain connection. Listen to me. I found you, and the Reapers are right behind me. You have brought them. You are a threat. So are you. I've seen what you can do. The war needs you. There is no war. There is only the harvest. Edie, do we have enough? Partial lock. Maintain connection to narrow the search. If you complete Leviathan sooner than this, it might have less of an impact when you finally do reach the endgame. Alright, so if you followed my guide so far, then the last DLC you will be playing is the Citadel DLC. Ah, Commander Shepard, your table is ready. Hey Shepard, not bad, huh? The sushi place is serious, like, French guy at the door serious. Only had to save the galaxy twice to get a table here. You seen the line outside? The reason for this is that the DLC counts as sort of a last hurrah for Shepard and friends. You will be adventuring across the Citadel in a mission that's almost reminiscent of a James Bond movie. But Shepard and the team will also be enjoying some much needed R&R before the last battle against the Reapers. I miss the days when Cerberus was just hilariously incompetent. You know, when you two ran things. Excuse me? <laughs> the only thing I was in charge of was the Lazarus Project, which, you will note, was very successful. Hey Commander, this is Cerberus. We were studying some Rachni, and they got loose and killed all our guys. Can you take care of that? Okay. It's one system over from where we hooked some guy up to the Geth, who then got loose and killed all our guys. They did rack up quite a body count. And at least back then, it was usually their own bodies. The ending bits of the Citadel DLC is sort of a somber experience. And doing it right before Priority Chrono Station just adds so much more emotional impact. If you do the Citadel DLC before any of the other DLCs, well, it's just not going to hit you as hard when you finally do get to the end. Now of course, this has just been my opinion. As I said before, you can obviously do the DLCs in any order you choose. But take it from a Mass Effect veteran, you're going to want to cash in on the emotional investment as much as possible. You'll be thanking yourself for it. And that's today's video. If you guys have any thoughts and suggestions for future content, just let me know in the comments below. And just out of curiosity, in what order do you usually play the DLCs? Let me know. Have a great day, Ensign Squad. Mr. Holton, out.